Welcome in to Between Two Meeples. I'm Armando Castaneda, and today I get to talk to you about a game called Unlikely Minds. This is a four to eight player party game that takes about 30 to 40 minutes. It was published by Bacon Board Games. It was designed and illustrated by Sonia Pellegrino. And it is a nice social deduction role playing game with like a bunch of like knowledge based kind of word stuff. I don't know. Picture Blank Slate and One Night Ultimate Werewolf smashed together and made a game. If that interests you, stick with me. I'm going to break it down. All right, let's quickly talk setup because we can probably cover this in about one minute. So once you get everything out of the box, you slam the board down as you can see here. You get the timer out, you flip that there, hand everyone one answer sheet, which is brown. You give everyone a role player's guide, which is white. I only got two out here for now, just for spatial constraints. Mind you real quick, this is a prototype, so anything can change after the Kickstarter, during the Kickstarter, during manufacturing. So uh, if anything looks different, if you watch this video later, it's because I'm using the prototype. All right, so now that we get all that out, you, everyone go ahead and choose a color, go ahead and slam all of them down, start. Go ahead and take the fortune cards, give those a little shuffle, throw them on the fortune pile, and all the topic cards are your black and white ones, go ahead and shove them right here where they belong. That is essentially set up. Less one very specific thing that we have to do for the first round, which is assign abilities. So you always wanna find the swindler card, so you wanna pull that one out. And then what I normally do is I you know, shuffle the other seven cards, randomly pull out three, since this is a four player game, set the rest to the side, and then you're gonna shuffle those four in there now. And then you will deal out a card to everybody and you are ready to start the game. Now let's talk about the point of this game. You are gonna be dealt a random card just like I did here and we're gonna flip it over. So I'm a psychic. That means that I'm going to spend this whole round trying to think about who else is going to be a psychic and how to think as generic or as, as common as possible. Because the whole point of being a psychic is you want to match. You want to be in common with the other psychics because that's the only way you're going to get victory points. Victory points allow you to move around the board here. You can see that it's the first one to get to this finish sign wins the game. So matching, if you're a psychic, is very important. Also, the other way to get a victory point as a psychic is picking out who the swindler is. So I don't know who the swindler is. Let's just randomly say I chose this person, not a swindler. So I would not get the extra point. Let's figure out where the swindler is. So the swindler was over here in the corner. That is how the psychics play. It is very easy. You just want to be on the same wavelength as the other psychics. But now, this is where the tricky part comes in, because if you're the swindler this whole entire time, is swindler wants to be as close to the psychics as they can, but make sure that they are wrong and that they are not wrong and called out on being wrong, because the only way that the swindler scores points is, one, they have to get wrong answers, and two, they have to be not chosen as the swindler. So they have to do a nice sell job on the other psychics saying, what? That guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He must be the swindler. He's thrown off. So it's that nice little, you know, one at ultimate werewolf, everyone throwing everyone under the bus type thing. And it works in this game. It's really, really fun. Now that we've talked about it, let's go ahead and do a fake round. So let's flip over a card. As you can see here, the first card is girl, steel, and weapon. Good choices, right? Me not knowing much about girl stuff, even though I'm a girl dad, I don't think of things that I can steal right off the top of my head. I feel like weapon might be the right choice for everyone to get on the same page. As a psychic, so this is who I'm gonna be right now. I'm gonna go with gun, I'm gonna be knife, and uh, you know, I'm gonna go with Ninja Turtles here, so I'm gonna go with nunchucks. I'm not, nunchuck, I'm not sure how to spell nunchuck, but I know what I'm talking about. So nunchucks here. That's kind of what I would do if I was a psychic, hoping that everyone else would be on the same wavelength as me and thinking, hello, Ninja Turtles, that's where you should probably be going. But as the swindler, my first thought should be, 
they need to be weapons, but they need to not be common weapons. So like maybe lethal weapon. Uh, maybe like uh, nukes are a weapon. And maybe like an F-16 can be a weapon. So all weapons, all close. I was in the military, so all valid to me. So hopefully that is enough to fake the psychics and know that, you know what, maybe I'm just, you know, a dumb airman guy that doesn't know anything other than what he worked on when he was in the military. And hopefully they think I'm just another psychic. And that's how you would go. So once we flipped everything over, I would have all wrong answers because, of course, no one chose any of the things that I did. And if no one chose me as the swindler, then great. Because as a swindler, you get to vote for somebody else as well. And that tilts the balances. So hopefully your vote sways it to the point to where you know somebody else gets voted as a swindler and not you. But if I did all of that, if I got all three of them wrong and I wasn't chosen as the swindler, I would get six points. So that's as the swindler, you get to move a little bit further and a little bit faster than the rest of your psychics. But it's hard to get through all three answers wrong and not get chosen as the swindler. Normally what ends up happening is if you have multiple people with three answers wrong, one of those two guys are getting picked as the swindler. So make sure you, you know, it's a tight line on, do you want to get one of them right? Do you want to get all of them wrong? Do you want to get two of them right? So how many points do you really want to this round? The only other thing that we haven't talked about is the fortune cards. Let me find an easy one. So like give this card to a player, they can move ahead for answers that match you during the next round. So like, you can't go wrong with fortune cards. They are going to be your friend most of the time. Sometimes there's bad stuff, sometimes there's good stuff, but most of the time it is good stuff. That is pretty much the game. The only thing that we haven't covered is the asymmetric player powers in the mastery mode. So in the master psychic mode, you will have everyone will get an ability based off of the psychic card. So like me, I was a magician. So for the magician, I'm supposed to select a player. If you guess at least two of their answers, move them back one space, or I get to move ahead or move them up one space. So you can be helping out a guy in last place or you can be hurting a guy in first place. There's an oracle here. If you have a check mark next to all of your answers you and you are voted for the swindler, move ahead three additional spaces. So that's giving you a bonus. If you were able to choose the swindler and get them all right, you get a nice three bonus jump there. So having these roles in the game really spices things up. So if you want anything that is going to like continue to bring flavor and talking and family and just a whole bunch of just throwing everyone under the bus like this is might be a game for you let's talk about how i feel about it you kind of got it out of the words that i've said is that i really enjoyed this game like it was a surprise hit for me like i don't really enjoy playing a lot of party games like don't get me wrong i do have you know a little few party games in my house i think i've called a lot of them i've already called blank slate and stuff like that uh, and because they get stale after a while, this one with the player powers, this one with the role playing game, like I really think that this one has a chance to stay in my collection for a long time due to the fact that it's very much like that one night ultimate werewolf. Like I really enjoy playing the role playing games and with this one having the role playing ability with you having to choose more than like one word to match and stuff like that with like the communication after everyone has written down their words and everyone pointing fingers at everyone and blaming somebody else and you know grandma throwing the kids under the bus or whatnot like that's the kind of fun that you want to have in a game that's the kind of fun that i look for in a party game you know not the lewd or crude humor that you find in some like the you know the other party games where they're being gross or being you know vulgar just to be vulgar like this was nice clean fun and I loved it. So if that is something that you're trying to find for your game nights, for your family nights, for your family game nights, I would consider looking into Unlikely Minds on Kickstarter. I will leave all the links in the description below. Go take a gander, go take a look. You know, if anything that I showed you looked interesting, you know, it might be worth 
a try just to look into it. That's my video for today. I hope you guys really enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please consider giving me a like and subscribe. I am Armando Castaneda. This is Between Two Meeples. I'm out. Thank you.